Oh. Class 11. Twelve on Wednesday. Three Friday. And start again next Monday. Okay? Be longer for this one. If you hear any noises, it's Sunday training upstairs. <laughs> but uh, other than that, got a lovely uh, image this morning or this afternoon uh, with mixed media. So there's a lot going on with this one. Okay, you don't have to finish it today. I know some people are trying to catch up, whatever that means. You don't need to do every class. Yeah? Plus, what have we got on our hands more than anything these days? Time. So your bags of time. You know, if you're not, if, I've been doing one, two, three a week, an hour, hour and a half. Yeah? So if you put the time in, you should be doing exactly what I'm doing, if not more. All right. So um, I'm going to carry on with the three a week and uh, try and catch up if that's what you want to do. Or just pick the ones you like. I'll go back to other things later on. You've actually got 24 classes now from when we started that um, you can go back to as well. Everything is still on site. So uh, when you will be paying again next week, or this week for next week, so I'll be asking you for the subscriptions and um, to start on Monday, uh, a new month. So it's going to be January, February. Okay, for the 12 week. And then uh, because at, at the moment, there's no way are we going anywhere out of this lockdown. So until I get the, vi uh, the vaccines, uh, we can't really do much. So there you go. But we can do a lot of painting. Which is good practice for me. I hope it's good practice for you. Uh, just some paper. Somebody's asking me what paper I use. It's lining paper. You get it from any DIY store. Just go to the store, get some, a roll of 1400 upwards grade thickness. Uh, give it a coat of gesso, acrylic gesso. I'll just show you the tin in case you forgot. Uh, get hold of it. That's it, gallery acrylic gesso, we put that all over the paper, one coat will do, just make sure you don't miss anything, any paper, it'll end up with a big hole, um, so the paint can be rubbed off and removed. It's all about layers this one, we're starting with acrylic, we're putting wax on, just willy nilly, this is one that uh, I did a while ago, the kind of similar technique, you can see it all that. Uh, the wax, yeah, it's a bit low down, isn't it? The wax is actually um, part of the underpainting, and then you scratch it off at the end, so you get these marks. So you can put it anywhere you like, really. Uh, this lady's got her flowers in her, so we can use it there. You could draw the side of the figure and put it on uh, the wrap around the waist or the hips. Yeah, very similar image, no arms on this one though. So uh, if she's sitting on a chair, you can just about see the chair, there's another chair behind her. So you don't have to do the background again. And um, because I've used oil on this, this is a bit of iron glazed over the top. Because once you start using wax, uh, you can't use water-based varnish, so you have to use oil varnish. And we've got oil varnish, so uh, you, know, you can use oil paint over the top. Uh, we can use ordinary varnish first, then use your oil over the top and then varnish it with Damar varnish, which is an oil based varnish. And that'll seal your wax as well, because it's um, oil based. Okay, so that's the kind of principle behind it. We build it up and then we can destroy it and then build it up again and then destroy it. Till you get to a point where it is aesthetically pleasing. So that's what you, <laughs> that's what you want to create, really. Something for you. Not for everybody else. I'm not bothered if people want to buy it or not. Uh, <coughs> it would be good if I could sell them. In it. But uh, my exhibition might be coming up. I don't know yet. In um, Gerstein. But um, we'll have to see what happens. Anyway. The first thing I'm going to do is put colour on. And with the colours you can put any colour you like. That one over there is green. Ultramarine. Elizabeth, But sienna. And yellow. But it's quite a bit though. So I'm just going to get some. 
Right. Yellow, yellow A, acrylic, and we're going to use some alizarine because if you use alizarine and you use yellow, you should get what do you get? Orange. And you can get a lid off because it's blocked this one. You get the lid off. So alizarine is a clear uh, red tone. And we don't want too much and we don't want it too thick. Yeah? Uh, we can look into it at the end. Uh, I don't know how long this one's going to last. I might just keep going all afternoon uh, until my battery runs out. And then we've got some green. I'm going to use some green on this one. Uh, just at the top. So I've got some uh, halo green. Okay. <coughs> and the first thing I'm putting on is my warms. I'm going to start with green and then add red and then add yellow. I'm going to add mucky colour. I'm going to start with yellow, then add red, then add green. I'll add clean colour. And I want it to be not too thick because I want to be able to, to um, rub out the colour to get the shapes or the form of the figure. Okay? So the underpaint is part of the form of the figure. And then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm going to use the wax. Uh, we have to dry it off first, so I've got my hair dry because you need to dry the uh, acrylic paint before you use the wax. Uh, when you put them, we, we're going to cover it in charcoal. Um, depending on how thick the paint is, and not thick, we don't want it thick. But uh, if you happen to put it on too thick, you'd have to use compressed charcoal. Uh, but I'm trying to use willow for now, and then move on to compress. But um, you don't have to do. Just keep it nice and uh, light with the willow, and then work back into it with compress. Uh, we are covering the whole picture and then we're going to fix it and glaze it like we've been done, done before and then we're going to start drawing this subject uh, we draw the subject and then we're going to rub out we're going to rub out with uh, a rubber before we fix it and glaze it actually and then we're going to do the same thing with the cloth so there's quite a bit to get through okay and I'll just keep going until we get some kind of uh, uh, something similar to that and then uh, then you can add or take away anything you want you know it's all about you creating some at, um, and not just copying okay and that's what I want, I want you to do actually this technique is a technique of layers so if you do it wrong uh, you probably destroy what you've already got too much so you can't get it back so you just have to be careful don't you so I'm going to get a big brush lots of water pick up some yellow I'm going to push this on yeah quite thick as well in areas I want this lovely warmth actually. Uh, let it blend a bit and then wash the brush, pick up some red, and we're going into alizarine, uh, which actually blends with uh, the colours of the yellow, so we're getting a nice warm colour. Uh -huh. And then at the top, I'm going to add, clean the brush because you want it to be green and not muck it because you want the green area, you see, uh -huh. to be part of the background. Uh, as you see, when he mix it with red, it goes dark, it goes kind of mucky. Um, we don't want that really. So yeah, we've got some green, you can go a little bit thicker with the green if you want as well. And just let that dry, dry off a bit. Yeah. Uh, and before we use uh, the, um, the wash. Um, we've got a cloth, you can stop the drips if you want. You can create textures, it doesn't really matter. You can paint it around. What you've already got, you know, like these shapes, or you can just add it, things like that, doesn't really matter, yeah. Um, but I want to keep that lovely warm, uh, that area in the middle where it's going to be nice and warm uh, for the figure, yeah. If you pull off and do that, you know, just scratch, um, drag, blend, anything, yeah. Whatever you feel like. If you've had a bad morning, just take it out on your picture. Just give it a great big uh, rub. Anyway, I'm going to dry that off. Okay.
So I've actually got rid of the uh, majority of the white paper, which is my intention. Yeah. Um, I'll just use a bit more yellow actually here, just to give us some warmth. And you're on warm green as well, can you see? Give that warm green, which could go into the head and the rest of the figure. And this creates textures as well, can you see? So that it's nice shapes. If I use the green down here, uh, very watery, very washy, yeah? Kind of green. And just leave it. Uh, keep drying. Lifting off some of the water. Yeah. Either in the figure or in the background, doesn't really matter. And uh, we make the figure appear from that. Well, can you hear me? Sorry. Right, off. Oh. You can add as many colours as you like, really, as long as you keep them clean. Uh, don't mix the colours together because you just end up with brown. Uh, we don't want that. <laughs> A bit more text, you know. And then, because it's dry, I'm just going to add a little bit more green to the top, where it's a bit darker, actually. And then dry that. Yeah, I'm going to stretch it because it's a bit puffy. I'm going to just lift it and stretch it as well. Just on this side. <coughs> just to uh, give me a bit, that's a bit bubbly over this side. Uh, so I'll just take the tape off. Like that. You see me do it as well. Lift it. Quite easy, really. Just be careful you dry the tape because the tape's still wet. You've got to just rip it, pull up from the centre, press it down, and that gets rid of the big wet bubble. You see, and it will dry. It can stretch the paper as well. Make sure you press the tape down again, like this. Give your nail all along the edge, inside and out. So it sticks again. And there you go, finished. <laughs> so we've got some really nice colours, textures in there. And the idea is we want to bring those out. So now I'm going to use some wax. I've got a rough idea of how the figure is going to look. Yeah, something like that. But uh, where the wax is, I can actually make a kind of shape that may be press on quite hard as well because you need it to uh, st 
stick to the paper and then also you need to be able to rub it out. So you press on quite hard right? uh, with, a, with a cloth, but not a lot. So you get these little marks and also getting these big areas. I can't do all the face or the, the shape of the figure with the wax, but I've got a rough idea. So I'm not that bothered. So if you look at this one, some of it's just haphazard. It's really you, the idea as well is when you put the charcoal on, I can feel the wax now. Uh, it's just kind of wax. When you put the charcoal on to cover this up, uh, it's going to stick to the wax bit. Can you see? So there, you see that? That is where I put the wax and it goes darker, alright? So that becomes part of the picture. So when you scratch that off later, you've got these nice, lovely colours underneath that are not, uh, not contaminated, contaminated with the charcoal. You've got these lovely light colours that are going to come through at the end. So I'm not burning over the figure because I don't really want that to be uh, quite. I've got it a lot in the background. I've tried to do the bit around the hair. Uh, we can make that, you know, we can make that stick actually. Um, and then I'll just blend it all the way down. This is Willow. Uh, Willow will just cover um, and make it slightly darker, which is what I want. Don't want it to be too dark. If you use compressed charcoal, you're going to get too dark. Um, well, you can use it, but it'll take a lot more to get it off. So if I blend it with my fingers now, you can see I've got these really nice areas where the wax is. So you don't lose the wax because it's there all the time. All right, it becomes part of your picture. And if you want to use oil paint at the end, uh, you can do, and that picks up. Uh, because you can paint over wax with the oil, you know, so it picks up. Uh, it's fine, it's just plain, plain, encaustic, yeah? encaustic. If you find it's a bit too light, you can always, like I said, use a bit of compressed charcoal. The only problem being, you see, if I go over that with compressed, it's going to be a lot more, a lot darker, and it's a little bit harder to rub off. So, anyway. I'm just going to leave that a bit of compressed in the background just to dirt in the background a little bit more, uh, not too much. Okay, so I've got a kind of a shape of the figure. Um, don't fix that because we need to use the rubber and we need to blend it and do all the subject first. Okay, so that's the colour underneath, not back. Keep standing back, having a look at it. So we've got this really nice seat. If I scratch that off now, you can see the green underneath. But you won't get rid of it because the wax has gone into the colour. So, uh, I actually use, you can use a palette knife, the edge of a palette knife to scratch off the wax. Or I've got um, a razor blade, one for cutting, uh, which you can, yeah, one of those with razor blades which you can use to scratch off the wax like that. Yeah, and go back to the colour. But uh, if you're using a razor blade or any sharp implement, just be careful. Oh, you chop your fingers off. I don't want any, any accident. Alright, so yeah, I'll get some little charcoal again. I'm going to sketch the subject first. Uh, using the head, she's about here. That's going to be this flower in her hair. The head's going off the picture as well, and that's why. I want to happen, so I've used the head as a constant from the back of the neck to the top of the picture is one, two, three, four, four and a half, at least four, so it's one, two, three, four, at least four. Uh, so that should be uh, okay. And um, because all that's dark, I'm going to just lock it in. And like I said, if you want to use compressor, it's fine. I can see the side of her face here, so we've just got the side of her face, cheekbone, and then chin, and then a neck. Don't forget, the neck comes out from uh, the top, the back of the head. So this is where her hair is, and you've actually seen it. And the ear as well there. 
uh, I'm just blending it with my, my hand. Um, I'll use a bit of compress just to get that really nice dark here uh, over the top and blend it in a hair. That was off the picture, but it doesn't matter. So here we've got a nice negative shape. It's the shape between the back of the neck and this shoulder, okay, which is like that. So if you look at the angles rather than the uh, curves, if you can, uh, the shoulder at a slight angle, yeah, like that, with the back here of the neck, and then this is coming down to about here. We make the shoulders at least at one and a half edge, so you know we don't want them to be too wide. So measure the head again like that, and then we go one from this and a half to there. So that is the shoulder on that side, and this is the shoulder over here. So that gives me that lovely angle. All right. So again, keep measuring one, two, three. So we use the picture one, two. Halfway down the back, three to the hip, um, the waist, and then four to about here. Okay, so <coughs> that's uh, as I said, one, two, three, and four is going to be right down here. We'll have a bit, bit of an area. So we've got a lovely angle here. Uh, this is compressed circle. This comes into the waist again because we're on one, two. Three, which is about here. So we're coming in and then we're coming out here. This, this shape. Uh, again, this keep the nice shape, the angle, and then we got um, that's the backbone, which is going to be on three. One, two, uh, top of the coccyx, which is about here. So it's one, two, three. Just make sure you get to one. Uh, so that's the back door and then this box is about here. So we get this lovely curve which is sitting. Uh, you can see the angle of the cloth and then just the top of the bum. Uh, so that's a nice bit of area there. Uh, not too wide. So we're going in and then we can block in uh, the background. So that's a bit of compressed. Not some compressed, not well. Um, I'm just going to block in the shape around the figure like this so as you're coming down here it blends a little bit uh, this blends into a darker shape there uh, this is the back which is about here don't forget it's curving and then it's coming out again so you're getting that curve and then it comes down to about here uh, that's where the dark area is and then we're getting a bit dark just hit down that area so, as shape, angle, this is where the, um, the shoulder blades go in the B. It's quite flat in the middle of the back, like that. Um, and I'm just going to use, and this is quite a nice dark area. So that's a negative space, so I just put that in. And by painting that, you should end up with the side of the face and the shoulder. Uh, the light is actually coming from this direction, above. All right. Uh, and then we can have this little angle of a head. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's come back and just look at proportion. You get a, a kind of a feeling for where the waist and the hip is going to be, which is in that area. Just block in the background tone so you get the shape of the figure. Right. And you can soften the edges as well. And then we're getting this uh, uh, this lovely uh, sheet that's, that's folded around. Uh, uh, it's nice and colourful. You can make it any colour you like. It doesn't matter. Uh, so this is this shape here. Yeah. And we've also got a nice dark shape on this side. <coughs> if you don't like using your, uh, your fingers for this blending bit, just use a dry cloth. We have a dry cloth. So that so you just get a dry cloth and blend it a bit. You spray it on and just soften it. 
Oh, I like using my finger. That telescope, you know. Just pluck in the background shape there. Negative space around the figure. Let it blend into the figure as well, because you want it to disappear around the corner. All right, so top of the head. It's somewhere up here, but it's not necessarily where you're going to see uh, where her head disappears, her head disappears in the background stirs. So you just kind of lock it in, kind of nice and dark towards the bottom. Keeping the figure simple, yeah? nice and simple. No figure, no hands, no arms, nothing. Then we use rubber. Um, you can use a bit of tissue, but I've done it, so I'm just going to use a rubber. Use your finger. So I'm going to look at the shape now. So I start looking at the shape at the back of the neck. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm rubbing out some of these tones that are coming down. So here we've got the um, shoulder blade, like that. Uh, and then here we've got this side of the, we've got a muscle all the way down. The, the right hand side of your, your back. Uh, we've also got this curve here and then that goes into this side of the figure. So this is the right hand side. Yeah. I'm just removing some of the charcoal to give me a nice kind of uh, the thing is with bikes, you don't get much in the way of contrast because they're quite flat. Yeah? So you get a flat tone that's just kind of uh, changes very slightly. Uh, it's like the, the light on the face here, a little bit, and then the ear, like that, and then the neck. See, it's a little bit of change in tone. Like the next going from green to red, it's quite nice. And then we come here, we got that bit, we're going to use the cloth as well. Yeah. So we can uh, start adding more light on this side by using the side of your rubber. <coughs> Try and see where it blends ever so slightly into the background. And then we get the light coming from here. So that is going to be the shoulder blade on this side. Over there, is it? When we start rubbing out, we'll go through the pigment, through the charcoal, and through the pigment to the white gesso at the back. So let's kind of just blend all this bit of the back of the spine. Um, we've got a lovely light here. Again, blends into the side of the waist. And then we've got this kind of curve. And that goes that away slightly. Just take the charcoal off of the tissue if you have one. I don't know. <coughs> and that's the light bit there. So she starts to kind of emerge from the picture. Yeah? So we've got the side of her waist and then the hip. Now I've got some wax there which is actually covering the side of the hip. I didn't have to that one. As you get down to this, it's a lot lighter. This is a lot lighter, and that's a lot lighter. Alright. Um, and this is lighter. This is going into that shape, which is here. Um, I'm just taking it. I've got a cloth here, so I'm going to use the cloth to soften it. Don't, uh, dry cloth, just to soften it. So this is. Right, the shape is back and um, you can see the buttock there and the light on the, on the fabric. Uh, just looking at some light there. Uh, this bit, which is quite light. <laughs> and then not much change in tone really. From the neck to the shoulders, and then that muscle down the side of the back here, it's quite light. And then this one goes that way, and then into the 
coaxia over. So when I lift that off, I, that's going to be a lot lighter. All right. Um, subject. Uh, we can lighten a bit of that. All right. Her hair is across the back there. Right. Just lift some cover there. We don't want it to be too. We actually see. If you look here, two dimples there and there. Let's put those in, and that's the shape of the coxes. Right here. <laughs> yeah, blend it with cloth. We get a similar kind of shape to what we're looking at. Nice angle at the back. All right, uh, stand by. Lovely colours. Uh, I can see it all because I'm I'm going across the picture, aren't I? Uh, I'll just lower it a bit. That's better. I should not see the, the bottom bit, which is there, where the bottom is. Um, so we'll keep that. Get rid of that now. Always keep your charcoal, as I said, uh, on your easel. Don't blow it about. You don't want it going airborne. You don't want to be breathing it in. Right, I'm going to fix it with some air spray, which is again, we're using this stuff from Boots. I don't know how to fix it, use it, and I'm going to just spray it to hold the charcoal. Now I've got some dark, I mean I've got some uh, compressed over that, so uh, you know, I'm going to take a little bit more spray in. Hair dryer again, uh, it's like being a hairdresser. Dry it off. Okay. I just touch it. It shouldn't come off. That pink finger shouldn't come off. Had it for glazing. <coughs> Colour I'm going to use. I'm going to use some more green. I'm also going to use some burnt sienna because I want to add a bit more warmth. To this area. Uh, the back's actually going that way, it's like it's got a curve on it. But you can put him in there and start using the cloth, so don't worry about that. A um, little bit of um, tissue. I need to get some tissue, I think. I'm going to use a bird sienna and I'm going to use some more green. Okay, just a bit at the top. So I'll use the bird sienna. I'm not using any of that, so I'm going to use some bits here. Uh, just here. On the figure, yeah. You can go all over. As well as softening, it actually um, warms things up. It slightly destroys it. That was the idea behind it. People say, no, it's destroyed. That's the idea. You want it slightly to destroy it. You know, pick up some green. I'm just going to go over here again and into the figure just to dirt in that bit. Yeah. But it softens, don't let it run because I don't want lines in her back. I want it to be a nice smooth tone. So, like I said, you get, get the brush and just drag it away from the figure so it doesn't run into all these different uh, shapes. So, that actually. What that does is knock the whole thing back. Okay, I've got a bit warm at the bottom, 
and I've also gone cooler at the top so I've got more uh, kind of shapes I can go at here you can start adding other colours later it doesn't really matter but this is your the basic shape for um, the figure the lady life session life class okay um, and we're going to draw back into it and uh, start using a cloth so that's some lovely green, some lovely bright areas. Uh, get the hair dryer again. I will stop talking now. If you want to create any more textures, you can just, uh, as it dries, you can rub things out Yeah. <laughs> Hold the glaze, knocks it all back. Then what I do now is bring it out again. So I can start looking at, I get my damp cloth now, which is one of these, a dishcloth. Uh, make sure it's quite clean. If I start up here where the cheap ball is, just a little bit of light coming off the cheap ball. <clears throat> it's much better doing this when the wash um, is dry, yeah? so we just take it off slowly. We don't really want to make it too too obvious yet, too bright. Yeah? Just want to bring it down. Start looking at that muscle in the neck there, and it joins into the side of the head. And quite quickly, just by a few strokes. You start to see the side of a face. Uh, we can do some negative space, which is the shape around the hair. So instead of kind of trying to do a hair, you can actually paint the shapes around it. You can also dirt them out, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so that's the back of a neck, and then we're going to dirt them out. And here we've got a little bit of a shoulder, so it comes forward and there. Ah, so you're coming forward. So now I can actually go right through to the underpainting. You see? Uh, so I can start building up the light around the figure. Um, because a back, like I said before, is not there's not a lot of uh, different areas of contrast. So we just kind of trying to think or remember where. You're going to get these lighter tones like shoulder blades which come down and then go that way I can see and then that blends into this area so the back of the back, uh, the back is which is a, a nice soft shape and if you do it slowly uh, and ski standing back you'll get a better shape and then don't forget that as you're coming down you're going lighter down here because it's more like catching that muscle inside of the back we're also getting these little areas of tone change so where you're getting the uh, shoulder blade there which is light because it's bony uh, and we're also getting the light catching the tip of her shoulder there like that we just start to remove the colours okay like and look at the shape of the you get a nice kind of triangle shape there, but the vertebrae make some lighter areas as well. If you find you're going too light, just cover it up again. And as you're coming over here, lovely light on the shoulder. Don't be too wide, actually. 
uh, and then this is coming this way into the shoulder blade. Think about the shapes around. Uh, so we get these little tints that are kind of lighter or darker, I should say. And then this uh, comes down from here. Lights catching, and then it gets a bit lighter here. Uh, you can always go uh, glaze it and make it lighter. So in the middle of a back here, it's quite tonal. It's quite uh, dark, not uh, very, very high contrast. And then we're just doing it. We're bringing out these shapes. I can see reflected lights as well coming from the front. And the shoulders are quite bony because uh, we've got shoulder blades there naturally. So you get these hard edges where the shoulder blade catches the light more than the skin does. You might have to use some white paint or white uh, pastel user paint towards the end so I'm getting that nice shape. And so going down here, so this muscle is lighter, yeah. And you can see how it's taking shape with it the light on the back of her is just going kind of curving like that slightly and then i'm just going to keep removing little bits of tone and standing back all this is a lot lighter at the time okay so that should be good as you can see start making it lighter still and it in. Ah, the other shoulder blades here. Ah, like that. A bit of a dimple there. And then you're getting the light on the shoulder. <coughs> so the colours underneath are uh, working quite well. Alizarine and um, yellow orange. Uh, it's giving me the warmth I need. And that blends into the rest of the figure. So we go down here and have a go to the hip. From that, I've got a nice curve of the waist and then the hip. Just go over your, your wax. You can rub it out in places. You'll go through it, yeah. Like that, so you can get the hip and the shape. Yeah. So more light on this side of the figure, uh, less on that side. That's a straight line. Let's go that way. shape is at the bottom of your back. You're also getting a couple of uh, dimples there. Coxis, maybe coxis area. And um, the light hitting. Let's put it. Alright, blend it. Uh, it's quite light there. And then you get a like a V shape there. It goes into this area. And then you get the light here as well. Okay. Go through 
through the, the wax and this area again into the hip. So Jen is more like <coughs> start to look around the figure you might find areas that are not light enough like the back of the neck yeah <laughs> and then shoulder yeah good work eh? Slowly curve into the uh, shoulder and back. Stand back. Yeah, she starts to uh, appear. You only had any kind of strong lines. Stick your nail in. Right. So we can get the muscle on the uh, or the bone. And then I'm just going to redraw some of the dark shapes. Right, so you can see a chin. Uh, something here, I don't know what it is. Uh, this is the flower, so I've got a lot of wax there. So, uh, we can make this. <coughs> uh, she has got kind of a lighter tone here, you can see. If you wet it and then take it off, just gives you that nice subtle change in tone. You can blend, paint that later if you wanted to, to give you some of these background shapes. Got a couple here as well, so that's all right. Uh, right. That, uh, that. Things in the background that we don't, I don't actually know what they are, but uh, with the add depth to your picture, it's the main thing. If we look, the lightest part of the figure is here. It's the muscle there, and it goes up the back into the hip. There, okay. It takes a bit, a little bit of rubbing. So as you start getting through to the uh, underpainting. Off a bit better, and I can go back right the way up to the shoulders. All right, a little bit of a dimple there. If it's too dark, soften it and go around it. And this is where she's got the um, shoulder blade actually, which matches this one. Okay. Right, you got a lovely light there, don't I? Uh, take the back up into the shoulders. This really soft area. It's kind of a big flat area. And then I'm going to um, redraw. So here we've got a little bit of reflected light there. You see this shape? Let's redraw that. And we've got some reflected lights here on the figure. And then as you get down to the waist, this goes into the
very strong like bottom of your bike going into that uh, triangle shape. Yeah, we've got subtle colours there, that's the main thing. That's the flesh tones. We can light them, we can darken them, we can do whatever we want there. Uh, this is a little bit darker, this area in the middle. And I'm just going to make that muscle a bit stronger. The side of the neck. <laughs> okay. Again, use your th thumb or finger to put a highlight, anything bony. So that's like the shoulder blade where the shoulder is. And then here, see? Just like that. Ah, not too bad. Um, so, redraw. So where the hair is here, I've got the cheekbone. I'm just going to be a little bit darker. Uh, so the, the back of the neck here, and where it curves into the shoulder. It's a nice dark there. Something here, I don't know what it is. This is where our flower is going to be. So just darken that bit. Keep the shape. And the top. And then the angle of this shoulder. And just blend in with my finger and bring out the shape. If you want that to disappear slightly around the corner, just turn it. And then we got highlights, so it's the side of the neck and the chin. Not highlight. And then there's a little fall there that comes over and then it comes out and then it goes dark. See? Uh, then we get the angle here, and that goes into her arm, and it curves away. Watch the angles, watch the shapes. Uh, try and get this lovely reflected light. Like that. And um, that comes down into the back. And a nice curve. That's going off into that direction. Uh, just blend that. And then here we're going this way, so we're coming out. <laughs> it's called um, foreshortening, where one area goes over another area, like that. You see? So this is the sheet that. Um, it's covering her leg because the legs run away from the, in this direction. Um, this is a bum. Uh, we've got a nice angle here for this other part of the sheet. Uh, this is a little bit darker at the bottom of the back, not much. And then if you want to go around that rose or even uh, go around the hair. It, make a hair stand out, angle that so it's darker still. You can take a bit out. Uh, all this is quite dark, so I'm just gonna um, blend it. Yeah, that makes the figure stand out. And we also look at the top of this sheet, it's slightly lighter. Yeah. As it falls away, so it's slightly lighter there. It's actually the same colour as the figure, but it's the sheet. Yeah, holding around the leg, uh, a bit here as well. Quite away from you. Uh, we've got some here. This is actually got the chair just coming out at that angle top of the chair you can see and there's a bit here as well the other side of the chair you can just see and then here um, oh it's the back of this 
that's the chair behind it and then this is the the back of the chair she's leaning on actually just a curve um, I've made her a bit more upright than she actually is because she's leaning more but it doesn't matter she's, uh, and then I put the light in on the chair uh, this negative space don't know what it is uh, the shape Just a little bit lighter, a little bit darker on that side. That goes up into a slight angle, uh, and then it goes a little bit lighter where the ribs, <laughs> ribs are under there. So here we've got a nice uh, angular shape. Again, I've got some wax on that side. She's going to help, and then these come round like that in front. Figure. Um, we can add a few more folds and fabric just by lifting off. Uh, hers quite nice, so I'm going to leave that as a greenish tone uh, with a bit more. Texture on top, just to give it some light, catching this side of her head actually. Um, just coming down to where the ear is. Um, there. Bottom of her, excuse me, bottom of her ear. Uh -huh. So to get to that stage is not, it's not a lot of uh, work. <laughs> to get things coming in from the background to forward it's like the um, the curve on the chair like that just a little bit of information same here uh, she's in tall bring out a lovely dark on the figure um, we can still go lighter, but we can still go about uh, like that. And the flower. So I'm going to spray um, I'll just put this chair in in the background. It adds a bit of depth to it. Like that. And the hair. So I can have a bit of a hair just catching the light, uh, just coming out from the shadows at the side of her head. Uh, uh, not too much. It's like a, you see Dega kind of sketches of uh, figures in the bath from where they Nice there, like that. Contrast between one area and another. So it's like that. Uh, shape there. You could paint that later. That goes that way. That way. Uh, also goes that way. And this goes darker. Blend it. Into the figure. Around the model. Okay. I'm just going to take more off here because this is the, a little bit of a curve there, like that. And the shoulder. And that goes into the rest of the back. Yeah, stand back. Don't forget we've got a varnish here as well. That will bring out the light areas. <coughs> a bit more light here. Some real light areas there because that's where the vertebrae is, and that's your uh, shoulder. It's the same as this one. So 
Okay, and this just blends into nothingness. Right, so from that, times it. Our bed, two o'clock. Just keep standing by. <coughs> to, um, I'm going to fix it and then we're going to add a bit more different colour. Uh, I'm also using a little bit of white. Okay. So some of this kind of background textures and we can use it on the cloth as well just to give me some areas that I might want to use. I'm going to add a bit of cerulean blue. Just a little touch. Small brush. As well. And a big one for blazing. I'll blend it. So um, because I want to pick out some areas at this side of the head, so I'm just going to pick up a bit of white and blue, and I'm going to just add this as a kind of glaze into the background. I'm just going to pick out the uh, the side of the hair. Yeah. It could go into that nice light shape. When it dries, it's very subtle. That you won't see much of it. You can also use this as light catching the side of the head. Uh, it disappears off your picture. Okay, if you want it to add a different flower, we could put this in there. It's kind of a purple tone. A bit of blue. A bit of blue in there, so I'm just going to add that there. Um, because it's something on the shoulder, and I'm not sure what it is. When we rub that out later, it's going to dis it's going to come out. I'm going to use some of this as well for uh, fabric. Don't forget, it's lighter going away from you. Uh, you can add a bit of sienna. Have I got any sienna left? No. A bit of warm yellow and red, actually. Some warmth. From where um, the figure is there. I've got this lovely kind of shape. I've got a bit here as well, so a bit more white, yellow and red. That will give me that lovely, because it's lighter than, if I ever rub it out, but it also helps me to block it in. Add different colours. I want to stick to one, make it colourful. Nice, colourful. And uh, uh, shape of things in the background. Okay. Blend it. Uh, okay. And um, you have the figure itself. We need to have oh, a bit of blue in that, so we need to have the shoulder quite uh, strong white. So first of this blend it and then this side of the uh, figure. Okay, blend it. Come back. Yeah, some nice shapes. Uh, just move my thing back a bit. Be better doing it long ways actually. And um, I'll dry it off. I'll take off the background colour, and you can varnish it with um, whatever uh, water-based varnish. Sorry. And uh, we can add other shapes. I just want to see now what. Um, <coughs> What the wax is going to do.
don't get the wax too hot uh, naturally because it's going to melt uh, you don't want it melting that much that it disappears let's have a drink Gatsby I might take some more colour off here yeah? but I've not touched any of that once I've varnished that I can't rub any more of it but at this stage I can still remove uh, the paint the uh, glazes Okay, um, yeah, so I want the wax. So I'll just start in an area that should be dry. Like this, so. Just scraping the wax off. Right. So I go back now to the painting. I initially did at the start, you see? If it goes flat, it will um, be able to rub more out because I've got the shape of my the textures under my board at the moment, underneath it. So we come down here, uh, you just see this bit, you see so that wax goes off. I've still got some charcoal there, so it doesn't matter. So they, they're just random shapes, and I just think it has a bit of entry, that's all. It serves no specific purpose rather than making it aesthetically pleasing to me. Yeah. You see, I'm just pulling out the wax. To reveal some highlights. Let's do this side. And the hair. Back of the head. with your fingers blend it so it just adds a bit of interest you can't carry on painting you can't carry on uh, destroying the background and bringing things out uh, a lot of the time I just leave them when I do do any which I've not done for quite a while just to get these lovely kind of uh, skin tone Less tones that helps uh, bring out the figure. Uh, the background can kind of be relevant as long as you make it look like the figure is sat in a space, yeah, that's um, shapes in the background. It could be a window, for instance. So if I want to carry on with that uh, that theme of um, window in the background, so I can put this shape in. And then destroy it a bit. Yeah. Anything. It could be a room full of people painting the nude. Um, so again, I want to add some kind of warmer colour here. Because it's quite warm there, isn't it? So it also gives it a curve of uh, the thigh. Uh, we can add a bit different colour, I think. Gives it a nice shape there. 
out adds to the <coughs> illusion. I could rub it out, but it's like I just want to add textures, shapes. Uh, this is lighter, warmer, uh, and shape there as well. And then this shape. You can't actually cover the likes up because you don't know where um, it will stick. The acrylic will stick to wax, that's why. I lift it off. Uh, I could put a bit of light on the chair. Like this. And what you're seeing these little highlights is the just catching the chair. Bits of information, we can put the rolls in now if you like, uh, it's in this area so in the hair, let's grab a few, see, and the flowers uh, in the hair, that was bits of information. Bring out this one because I quite like the way it sits. I always like there's something else in there, I need to dial it up to you what you put in. And we want to remove more colour. Just wet the picture so we can go back to the white. Uh, but a lot of it is quite subtle changes, so don't don't go back too much. Um, I have known people go straight through the pictures, so just be careful. The gesso is quite uh, robust. Changes the the angle, shall we? So we can change the angle of the room. Um, can use a soft brush. I should always keep a dry brush actually. So you've got this nice changes subtle soft area of light eh? from there to here. So do it at the top of the head. Quite like the way it is that time, believe it. Okay. Um I've got to do a little bit more light here to just see where the light's catching. The right hand side. Oh those dimples. I'm back. That's it. I'm going to leave it. You can spray it. You can fix any charcoal that you put on. That's all. Like that. Very dry. Burnish it with Dama. 
uh, when you're happy with it. You can still go over the top with oils if you use down there. So that you're never kind of stuck. And you can glaze with oils naturally. Uh, knock it all back. Uh, just take the tape off. Very quickly done. A great for life classes actually. It's saying I've served them back. Get it really nice uh, effects very, very quickly. Put the tape off. Just off the tape. Uh, fasten it up here. And that's it. It's still on. <coughs> okay. Um, again, let it dry fully, then get your, you can get your scraper again, and just you see, you still, you'll still be able to rub out, get more of that wax, the charcoal off. Like that. You get really nice strong areas of colour. Uh, oops. No. Uh, only when you're happy do you burnish it. And then uh, do another one. So I might leave that, I might burnish it, I don't know yet. And then I'll put it on online. Okay, do. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'll do a bit more to it. I'll put a picture of it in on as it is now. <clears throat> and then I'll, I might do some more and then put a picture of it on. You see, you still have dirt. You can still bring out some of these tones. Each time you use your pastel or charcoal, make sure you use dirt. Yeah. You'll varnish it and it could look smudge. Okay, do thank you very much. See you, um, my day over today. Um, it's murder, isn't it? Monday. See you Wednesday with the last class painting in the style of. I know I'm not going to tell you who it is. I have got somebody in mind, yeah, who uh, I found recently. Uh, quite a nice landscape abstract painter. Okay. So I'll leave you in suspenders, a uh, suspense, sorry. And then uh, I'll put it on uh, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.